بسم الله وما شاء الله ولا قوة إلا بالله. Uh, our uh, faith teaches to uh, when we enter our paradise and by paradise we mean our achievement place is to say that this is is only but the wish of Allah, the wish of God, and that there's no might attributed to yourself. The might is attributed to Allah, to God. And when I see all of you here, stay until almost five o'clock and uh, looking at these fantastic uh, posters and, and publications that I see in the background, I really feel very, very proud to be Libyan. Uh, it's, it's really nice to see, despite all the, uh, what we said, which was true and factual, that the difficulties have been there for years and years, but despite that, you see so many examples of, of uh, Libyan people producing and achieving. And I can see in front of me that the future in Libya is, is going to be good. And I'm really, really proud of that. I was asked by uh, Dr. Abdel Basit to talk about the opportunities and maximizing the opportunities uh, in the health for the, for the Libyan health sector. So this is really talking about uh, graduate degrees and it's something that I don't deal with. I, I work uh, uh, as a clinician, I do some research, but I'm not affiliated to any organization. And, and really the motivation for me to be involved today is, is just to see how can we help people who are in a decision making like uh, Dr. Abdel Basit uh, and, and many of the speakers early on, how can we improve the chance of our new generation? People like yourself, you're almost there, who have uh, in, the, in the PhD degree, but there are others who are trying to come and we want to make them feel that the chance is there for them and they can achieve. Uh, and all they need to do is to look around them, look at the, how many Libyan uh, postgraduate doctors or, or in any, any other field have achieved despite the difficulties that, that was mentioned to us early on. So uh, I, I decided just to choose the title of how to choose a good university. And, and that's a question that obviously a family like myself, when I was thinking of my children, and my son is somewhere there, he's standing there, and that's my son here, when he was uh, graduating. Uh, it, it was a difficult decision. Um, but the thing is, uh, when it comes to organization, like uh, government, so most overseas gov government will actually choose um, universities based on the research output. There is, uh, I'm, I'm really lost for sequence now, here, yeah, here we go. The, uh, the research assessment exercise, and now being replaced by REF, is the basis where most overseas government decide to choose a university. And the, the basis for the REE is, is the research output. Now research is good because good research is produced by good scientists. But when it comes to, to an overseas student, we need to look at things other than just research output. And I was hoping to be able to tell you uh, through my presentation, what other things we should be looking for. I'm really sorry because the sequence is completely different than what I had in mind. But uh, never mind, I'll carry on, we'll, we'll, we'll carry on. The, the issue about the REE, it doesn't, it, what, it's based on the best publication by a number of lecturers in a, in a university. Now, it doesn't tell you all because obviously the smartest and the most clever uh, research clinicians or researchers are not the ones that are really likely to be teaching students. So you may be producing lots of research, but you're not always there to produce the, the good for the student. And whether the student have the opportunity, the postgraduate student have the opportunity to meet up and work with these uh, high uh, producing uh, researchers. So I think we should look, uh, this is just an example of the RE. You can look it up in the, in the internet. Um, and it shows you the, the ratings, this is four star suggests the highest, most impact publication and one star is less. And you can see here very quickly, for example, University of Birmingham score very high and Coventry next to it will score much less and then a difference between two colleges in, in London. It, 
But it doesn't give the whole story because it's not just about research when it comes to uh, an overseas student. You can look at the website. I just picked the Cardiff University up, up, uh, up just because I, I, I teach medical students from Cardiff. And it tell you there about the quality of the research. So that's a nice resource to tell us, is that research relevant? Is it something that we can actually take over and help us back uh, in, in, in Libya? Let's look at, other, look at other factors, which I think are very important. And it was alluded today, today I think, in the, the, by my colleague from uh, Huddersfield, uh, when you talk about the teaching, teaching quality. Teaching quality is very important because um, there are many ways you can assess this teaching quality. You can use the quality assurance agency, the certain professional bodies, for example, in the psychology field, there's a British Psychology Association which will accredit a degree and so on and so forth. But the easiest and the most impartial and independent is the Unistat. And the Unistat is based on a feedback Sorry, that's what, that's what it is. The Unistat is based on the feedback taken from the student, done online or done by phone. So here, you're relying on what the third year student experience is. And that's basically like the, like if you do any commercial business, you want the customer's response, because the customers are the ones who actually sell your, buy your product. And this is the many questions that the, the third year student will be asked to assess um, the quality of teaching in the university. And I, again, I'm, uh, because I work in Wales and I have link with the sports science department in, in Bangor University, I, I looked at the Unistat. I can see here they actually scored very high. And, you, and that just reflects that a university which is not very famous but can produce an excellent teaching quality. Not judged by myself, but judged by the people who actually use the course. Uh, Another thing which is important is what the, the, what the international student gets out of this university. Because as an international student, you'd be paying more fees than uh, a local student. So you would expect, because you're paying more fees, you would expect what do you get in return. And that's very, very important. Uh, we mentioned earlier on about visas that were failed and so on. We have to look up the university. Do they have an office that provides Visa services, English language training, which we mentioned early on, uh, to prepare the student to do their PhD or the master degree. What about the accommodation? Because most of overseas students, when they come, they like to live near the campus. They don't want to drive outside. They need to live somewhere where they can walk to their own course. So we need to, to look at the simple things because they actually do matter. If you're an overseas student, and most of you here, it can put your hand up if you have a car. Can you just, just out of, how many of you have a, have a car? Not a lot. Not a lot. So you can see things like this really, really matters. There are many services that university can produce. One of the hardest thing for an overseas student, doesn't speak very good English, is to come and no idea where to go and where to live. To have a, a university that provides you with a meet and greet service add up to the value of that course. So I think we should be asking the, the institution, what do you produce? What do you give to make our students uh, welcome and actually benefit from, from the course? I won't dwell in employability because perhaps it's slightly different. It was mentioned early on uh, as a, if, if it, it reflects if the university is effective, the student out, out of that course will have a better chance to work. But most of our students coming from Libya have a setup where they go back to employment, I would think. So I'm, I'll pass on that because of the time. Um, no, it was supposed to. Another important factor is the facilities. Facilities that you actually provide for the course that you study. Um, and if these facilities are accessible, uh, are they something that you can actually use? Is there a technician that can teach you how to use them? And you can't establish the facts unless you visit the place. That was mentioned early on uh, in, in many of previous speakers. We must encourage the light, you know, our, our people who are responsible for, for, for uh, education to go and visit universities, or at least use their eyes. There are so many Libyans about. Dr. Hamrush is in Dublin. I, I live in North Wales. There's so many people. 
do make a contact and inquire, is there a facilities, is this ship that they have in the marine science department, is it accessible? Do they have technician to teach this postgraduate student to use it? So all these are really important for us so that the facilities and are they accessible or not? Uh, IT was mentioned early on and so on. And then uh, extracurricular things. Now the extracurricular things are really, really important. I was speaking early on with one of, one of the Libyan graduates and, and he was telling me that the first question that a postgraduate student asks says, is there a halal food in this place? And, and where do you go shopping? And, and I, um, it, uh, is, there a, is there a classes for the, um, for the children to learn Arabic or to learn religion? These things are important. Of course, in any university, they boast that they have a, a sports center, they have a cinema, and these things are important, and, and, and theater and all things, but we really need to go down to the most basic things. The availability of accommodation near, near, the, near the campus, the presence of things that people need, like a, a, a child going to learn their own language or their own religion uh, teaching and so on and so forth. So that, that extracurricular factor should be one of our sources of information that we should use uh, to enhance the, uh, uh, the opportunity for our overseas students. Uh, it's, I think the league tables were mentioned early on, and you can get them from the Independent, easy to read, The Guardian, slightly tricky, but it's available, or you have to pay money for, to get the University League from, from the Times. But that's, again, a position that people of responsibility who make decisions, they can look at the, at the League, University League, and decide perhaps where, sh where we should send someone to study marine biology or exercise science and so on. I had intended to speak about uh, how do you improve a chance of a doctor getting uh, a higher degree, but to be honest with you, it's been well covered my previous colleague, but I, I, I just, this is, this is the area of North Wales, and I actually, I live just there. You can see it's a lovely place to be in. Uh, I've, I've lost the sequence of my slides, you have to excuse me, because this is a very old version. Uh, so I'll skip on this, uh, this slide. There are, this is the questions that I just thought we should ask uh, to ensure that the course will provide the best thing for our, our postgraduate studies. The ratio of student to teachers, uh, do they get chance to be taught at, at, at a, a smaller group levels, and what do the international students get, which we mentioned earlier on. I think we should think in health. I was speaking here to maybe to Dr. Abdul Basit. As well as doctors, which I mentioned early on, we should think in a lot more prospect than just doctors. It is so important for Libya to have that pyramid reverse. I think Dr. Fatma mentioned it's the, the, the incredible situation in Libya where you have many thousands of doctors and only 2,500 nurses. We should think of radiology, nursing, laboratory technician, occupational therapists, because these are essential. Sports science, I work with the sports science department a lot in, in our dialysis patient, but the diabetes is a big problem in Libya, and osteoporosis. So we need to have people to become sports scientists. So health shouldn't be just focused on doctors alone. It really should include a lot more than uh, doctors to make sure that the health service in Libya will actually improve and enhance. Uh, and I can just thank the organizers for the excellent meeting. I really, really enjoyed myself. And I'd like to share with you my appreciation for what Dr. Abu Basit and his colleague did. Thank you very much.